Hello and welcome to the course CS348 Advanced Computer Network. This is the third lecture of module 4. In this lecture, we are going to discuss on IEEE 802.11 system architecture. Recall from the last two lectures, we have already covered introduction to wireless LAN and infrared versus radio transmission, infrastructure versus ad hoc network. So these three part, this three section we have already covered from uh, our syllabus of module 4. And in this lecture, we will discuss the system architecture of IP3802.11. So let's begin. We know that 802.11, which is sometimes called Wi-Fi or wireless LAN, is the most popular family of wireless LAN technology. Not only this, the IEEE 802.x LAN standards are also popular. So there are several 802.x LAN standards. Some standards I have mentioned over here, like 802.3 is nothing but that is called Ethernet. 802.5 that is called token ring. Some others are also present like 802.4 which is called token bus. Okay, so these are the LAN standards related to your 802.x LAN standards. And this 802.11 wireless LAN standard also belongs to this group. Fine. So 802.11 is also have other LAN, wireless LAN technologies also available for this particular standard. So those are 802.11b, 802.11a and 802.11g. So these techniques, I have made a comparison um, among these techniques. These are all wireless uh, LAN standards and here it is. So if you see this particular table in 802.11b, the frequency range will, will be from 2.4 to 2.485 gigahertz and the data rate is maximum up to 11 Mbps. And if uh, the device uses the technology 802.11a, then the, they will work on the frequency range of 5.1 to 5.8 gigahertz and it can transfer the data or up to the data rate will be 54 Mbps. Similarly, 802.11g, the frequency range is again 2.4 to 2.485 gigahertz, but it can uh, send the data Rate, his data rate is up to 54 Mbps. So these are the all technologies related to your 802.11 standards. Now this uh, particular wireless standard can also be implemented through your infrastructure mode as well as ad hoc modes. That means this all these three standards allow both infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode. And what is infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode we have already discussed in the last class. So those who don't know about this then he can go directly to the previous video and try to watch that video then uh, watch this video to understand the entire concept so i will explain the architecture of both uh, how the mobile devices are you know, form say infrastructure modes uh, means how the mobile nodes prepare their infrastructure mode and as well as how they work in the ad hoc mode so let us uh, discuss one by one so the first architecture that I am going to show you is the infrastructure mode. Now I have prepared the figure in such a manner that it will come for every point the figure will be shown you something and it is very interesting uh, architecture and you never forget after watching this particular video uh, about system, system architecture of i 3 So let's start. So how the architecture is built up? It will be built up like this several nodes so here several nodes means we can say all the mobile nodes called stations so all the nodes are basically called stations and it is represented as sta i i can be varies from one two three four so if there is a single station then sta1 if there are two stations then sta2 sta1 and sta2 and so on so several nodes called stations are connected to access points. So there will be an access point that is called AP and every STA is connected to, to this. So I am showing you two such architecture over here. This is the access point. One STA, one, one mobile device which is connected to this access point. If you see here, there is another access point and there two STAs are connected so this is it now i have given the name sta2 and sta3 fine 
this is first the build up is made, made like this so what is a station stations are terminals with access mechanism to the wireless medium and radio connect to the ap so all the generally this is this has the access mechanism and he know how to connect with the access point through radio waves fine then the stations and the ap which are within the same radio coverage form the bssi that is called basic service set so i am trying to show you two basic service set over here look at the picture you can see so as these are coming under one particular range so this forms one bss that is called bss1 similarly as these three devices are coming under another radio frequency range so this form another bss that is called bss2 basic service set 2 so there are two basic service sets given in the figure fine the example shows two bss that is bss1 and bss2 which are connected by a distribution system so these bss are connected through a distribution system and it is looking like this so that means this is the distribution system all distribution system is connected to the access points and the access point through the access point the STAs are connected and when they are form a, uh, means they are operated in a uh, same frequency range then they form a BSS okay so what is a distributed distribution system a distribution system connects several BSS via the access point okay so you can see here distribution points distribution system connects several access points and through AP that is called access points to form a single network now you can treat as this is a single network and this distribution system can also extends the wireless coverage area okay so this extension means when these BSS are connected via a distribution system the entire network the total the whole network this network is now called extended service set and this is represented like this so this is now your ESS means this is a bigger network how the bigger network is formed by the help of distribution system and this is how uh, the entire network looks similarly distribution system can also connect the wireless network via the AP with a portal something the term is called portal which forms the interworking unit to other LANs too. So you think about all other Ethernet LANs like 802.x LANs. So those LANs also been connected to this your this distribution system also. Okay. These are the wireless LANs, the wireless LANs which are connected to the distribution system and everything is wireless over here. They need to be connected to the LAN to make it infrastructure means giving an infrastructure loop and that how it will be doing it will be doing through a portal so you can see here this is a portal portal is connected to all the lands ethernet land connections may be token ring or token bus by 802.1x lands so every land coming under this particular area so this also connected to the distribution system fine so this is actually the architecture of your 802.11 in architectural means uh, the that is called infrastructure mode fine so what is a portal actually portal is also connected through APs access point so there will be somewhere inside this there will be access point who connects to that port fine let us discuss uh, one by one every whatever con uh, connection will be there how they are communicating and how the data get transmitted so every ESS so I have already told you what is ESS so every ESS has its own identifier and this identifier is called ESS ID. The ESS ID is the name of the network and is used to separate different networks. So as this is a ESS, somewhere other ESS can be built up through other distribution systems. So every ESS need to be numbered, means uh, given an ID so that 
anybody want to communicate with this ESS, he should know the ID of that, that particular network. Then only he can, the mobile devices who want to communicate with this network, they need to know the ESS ID to communicate with them. Okay. So without knowing the ESS, ESS ID, it should be, it should not possible to participate in wireless LAN. So as I have already discussed, means uh, generally what will happen if we are, we want to communicate through uh, a Wi-Fi device. So what we know, we know the name of that uh, particular Wi-Fi device. Like whenever you are entering into your college, you can find the different, uh, uh, different ESS ID over there. So what are the ESS ID? So the name of that network is shown to your mobile. When you click on Wi-Fi uh, on your mobile, you can see number of ESS ID or the name of the networks you want to connect. If the network is open, you can directly connect to that. If it requires a password, then you provide your password and you connect to the uh, network. Uh, means assume that there is no hacking. So if it is ha hacking is possible, means that is obviously the hacking is possible. So several people are trying to access the Wi-Fi network of different uh, organizations by going to going closer to that particular access point. So that is possible. So assume that as hacking is not possible, then the only way to connect to that particular network is knowing the ESS ID. Okay, fine. The architecture of the distribution system is not specified further in 802.1. Means what is inside this architecture, inside this distribution uh, system was not been specified by this standard. But uh, we know that it consists of like uh, bridged IEEE LANs, wireless LAN links or any other networks. Okay, so the, they contain generally bridges and your uh, wireless links, everything will be contained inside your distributed system to make this communication possible. Stations can select an AP and associate with it. So if this is a station, this is another station. So these stations can associate with any access point that is present in the entire ESS. So they can travel from one access point to the other access point too. So that is their choice. Whenever he is moving from one access point to other access point, then he will be part of another BSS. So the AP supports roaming. So as I have already just now discussed roaming, that is changing the access point. The distribution system handles the data transfer between the different AP. So actually this distribution system handles the data transmission between your access point to access point. But what the access point will do? The access point provides synchronization within a BSS, supports power management and any control medium access and, and can control medium access to support time bounded services. So the communication between this particular BSS will be taken care by your access points. They will allow the communication between the STAs and we know that when this type of communication, the STA can only be communicated through, through the access point, not directly to the mobile devices. This is not possible in IEEE standard. Okay, so if STA2 wants to communicate with STA3, then he has to send the message to access point, then access point will communicate those things to STA3. This is how the communication takes, takes, takes place in your infrastructure mode. Now let's go to the ad hoc mode. So how the ad hoc uh, network architecture will be built up by using 802.11. So I have given the figure over here. So let us read one by one point and let us relate those points to this figure. So in addition to infrastructure based network, IEEE 802.11 allows building ad hoc networks between stations. So as you can see here, every ad hoc network thus forming one or more independent BSS that is called IBSS as shown in figure. So if you see here, whenever they are independently building a BSS with same frequency range, here there will be no concept of your access point. Every node are nothing but that is called STAs. This is STA1, STA2, STA3. They can directly communicate with each other when they are in the range. And this independent network is called your IBCS, IBSS1 that is called independent BSS1 and here another network is formed that is called IBSS2 where there are two stations STA4 and STA5. In this case an IBCS, IBSS comprises a group of stations using the same radio frequency as just now I have told you 
Station STA1, STA2 and STA3 are in IBSS1 and STA4 and STA5 in IBSS2. Fine. Now, there is an interesting fact, fact over here. This means that according to this example, STA3 can communicate directly to STA2. If we see this scenario, STA3 can directly communicate to STA2 but not to STA5. Why? Because they are they are in different IBC, IBSs and they are working on different frequency range. So they will not be able to communicate. That is ST3 cannot communicate to ST5. Fine. This is how the adapt network architecture is built. So that's all about uh, the two mode. Uh, thanks for listening. This is this is for the today's class. Thank you.